So our last video, there was a lot going on. We created this new factory object, and we created a ton of objects, tile objects inside of it, as well as arrays, and we have an array within an array, and there's a lot going on, certainly. So let's take a little bit of time and go through what we did. And the easiest way we're gonna be able to figure out what this method does is to actually look at what the information is inside of it. So let's go to ccviewcontroller.h, and, excuse me, ccviewcontroller.m, and we're gonna import our factory. So we can say cc factory. And the reason we're gonna import cc factory is we're gonna create an instance of cc factory inside of viewDidLoad. So we're gonna go into viewDidLoad, and we're gonna type cc factory, factory is equal to cc factory alloc in it. And we know that our instance method tiles is going to return an array of tile objects to us, or actually an array with an array, so uh, an embedded array with tile objects that are going to be in there. So in order to correctly capture this information, we can create an NS array, and we can say our tiles is equal to factory tiles. Well, we could even change this variable name here. It doesn't have to be tiles. We could say like return of factory. But tiles is pretty nice because it tells us that now we have an array of tiles that the, the instance method tiles has created for us. So next, let's go ahead and NS log our tiles object, since we know that by calling the instance method tiles on factory, it returns an array of tiles that we went and created in CC factory. And now I go ahead and run my application. And let's take a look at what the console output looks like. Oh, looks like I already have my simulator running. If you ever see that, Go ahead and just exit out of your simulator. And now when I go ahead and run my application, it's gonna take a second, the simulator has to load back up again. And we're gonna see in my simulator that I have a bunch of information here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my console a little bit bigger just so we can see everything. And now we see that I have two parentheses, right? There's a double left parentheses, and then there's uh, an array here right and we see that it's separated by commas so I have three tile objects in there and then I have another array and so we see that we have four arrays inside of an array right so we have these outside parentheses and inside of each one of our arrays we have three tile objects well if we were to think about this in terms of the x and y axis we would be able to say that the uh, objects or the, the tiles here represent the number of columns. So we would be able to say number of objects in my tiles array is equal to the total number of y axes I have or y uh, columns. So I have four columns because I have four elements in my array here. And then inside of each of my array, well, that would be the number of rows I have. So that would be three rows. So again, try to look at the chart and compare it to what you're seeing here. But hopefully you now see that we have an array within an array and that's kind of what my factory method is giving back to us. And the beauty about this is I haven't had to write almost any code inside of ViewDidLoad or inside of CC view Controller. And as much as we can, we want CC view Controller to manage the view. And by abstracting all this object creation over to CC factory, we've really been able to keep view Controller very clean and doing its primary function, which is managing our view. So that's kind of the idea behind why we bothered creating this factory and what our factory is in fact giving back to us.